What exactly is it that uh, the astronauts and the scientists and everyone down there have to contend with in order to make sure that that rocket can get out into space safely? Yeah, sure. Thank you very much. Um, there are usually just a couple of criteria that are the launch weather criteria, and they are uh, activities that are within 5 to 10 miles of the launch site, and that includes lightning and freezing temperatures. Today's launch was scrubbed because of electric fields, electric field intensity, which is usually a precursor to, uh, to lightning. And so the launch was scrubbed just uh, right before we started the liquid oxygen load because we already had RP-1 uh, loaded on the vehicle, which is the uh, basic petroleum fuel, and uh, liquid oxygen is the oxidizer. So the last thing you want is to have a lightning strike mm. with a fully loaded vehicle, and that's why they canceled today's, uh, today's mission and rescheduled it for May 30th. And we had seen... Um headlines earlier this afternoon from NASA saying that the SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket was already fueled. Do they have to undo everything and redo everything um, in the next attempt, or can they kind of, I don't know, I mean, this is a dumb question, but just put a cover on it and, and be ready to go on Saturday? No, this, this is a, a unique thing about the Falcon 9 is that it's fueled right before launch, and this was a point of contention with NASA and SpaceX. Um, the RP-1 is, uh, is started just within 30 minutes, and then, you know, the last 16 minutes is when they load the liquid oxygen. What they're going to do is they're going to offload the fuel, and then once they offload the fuel, then it's safe for people to approach, uh, approach the vehicle. So, Sean, when we talk about just kind of the historic nature of this, I mean, obviously you kind of, kind of have to go back to the 50s, the creation of NASA and the space race and uh, putting a man on the moon in the 60s and, of course, uh, the shuttle program. NASA at this point appears to have seeded uh, most of the development of uh, the physical uh, aspect of getting folks and things into space to private companies, whether it's SpaceX, Virgin Galactic, Blue Origin, or whoever. Is this, are we pretty much committed to this as a nation that the future of U.S. space flight and U.S. space involvement is going to be driven by the technology that these private companies provide? Well, I like to look at it in terms of, in terms of risk and what private companies know. You know, we had 50 years of NASA's cost plus contracts where it was very hard to assess it was very hard to assess the risk associated with a particular mission for going to low earth orbit you know we did it for gemini and the mercury the gemini and the apollo uh, apollo programs and for the and for the shuttle so there's a lot of institute industry knowledge about what's required uh, uh, to do this so i think for those programs where uh, investors can assess risk then uh, that makes uh, that, that's kind of the foundations of putting your money forward in a private company as as an investment, like what you see in SpaceX and Virgin Orbit and uh, and Blue and Blue Origin. There are going to be those programs that are still inherently risky, where NASA is going to have to absorb the risk, and I expect those kinds of programs are going to be cost plus programs because private industry has a hard time assessing the risk. Hmm. But for these programs, like hmm. what we're seeing with SpaceX. This is a fixed cost contract, and that's because there's some aspects of it that uh, the risk is the risk is known, and private companies can accept that risk. Okay, so this is part of NASA's commercial crew program, and my understanding is that it um, moves the agency, NASA, closer eventually to putting the first woman and uh, next man on the moon. Uh, in 2024, that's the Artemis program. Walk us through what needs to happen before that can take place. Well, those are those are some tough uh, those are some tough milestones. The first thing we need to do is to uh, uh, have the human rated uh, vehicles uh, uh, certified by NASA, like what we're seeing today with um, with the SpaceX vehicle, and what we'll see later on this year uh, with uh, the Boeing vehicles. Um, there's uh, an entirely uh, uh, different program from the commercial crew, which is the NASA uh, lunar uh, lunar effort. Uh, for that, uh, NASA has uh, uh, released contracts to three companies, um, SpaceX, Blue Origin, and Dynetics, and each of them have a different approach to going to space. For the SpaceX program, they're actually planning on using uh, their new uh, 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 Starship vehicle, which is still under the development stage. That will also have to be uh, uh, certified for human space flight, and they're going to have to go through a certification process similar to what we've, uh, what, um, 
the uh, dra- the Falcon 9 has, has gone through. So there are a lot of uh, milestones to do. The SpaceX mission today, we had to go through about 20 separate milestones mm. for human certification mm. of that vehicle. I'd imagine a separate, you know, 20 to 30 uh, milestones will have to be accomplished because it's not only just getting to low Earth orbit, but then uh, the transition to a lunar a lunar orbit and then a, the lunar lander uh, 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 program as well. So it's it's going to be just uh, you know twice, if not three times, as complicated as uh, what we've gone through uh, for uh, 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 for uh, uh, this mission with SpaceX and also with Boeing. So, Sean, I mean, from in terms of the manned space flight, then, I mean, what is sort of the longer term ambition here? Because we geek out over this stuff. It's obviously just an amazing feat of uh, a human uh, ingenuity here. But is there sort of a practical reason why we're going back to the moon, why we're looking to go maybe even beyond the moon? Sure. Uh, I think uh, a lot of those reasons are for uh, uh, commercially motivated. NASA has just recently started a uh, LEO commercialization, low Earth orbit, commercialization of low Earth orbit. Uh, The International Space Station is a destination for both uh, governments and companies to operate um, in a microgravity uh, environment. NASA is looking at a wide variety of companies that include uh, the usual suspects that are uh, Lockheed, Northrop Grumman, Boeing, but also includes Blue Origin and Sierra Nevada and some new entrants like NanoRacks and Axiom that are looking to build um, either modules that attach to the ISS or free-flying modules. Um, Those uh, platforms will serve as uh, anchor points for uh, more human operation in in low Earth orbit. So this is something that comes out of our existing work on the International Space Station, and just pushes it into uh, into the commercial sector. As for going back to the moon, well, there are a lot of things. If you talk to the uh, mineralogists and you know people out of the oil and gas industry, they they will tell you that you really only know uh, just a rudimentary uh, rudimentary number of things about the lunar environment and what the resources are right. that are uh, embedded within the lunar surface. So um, that's that's certainly more of a stretch, but it's very important that we go yeah. back to the moon in order to prove out those models.